So let's see, except that replay, let's also try and find out and let me show you if I can find an example of how this thing improves uh, the behavior of the car in even more extreme conditions. So let's go at Monza for example. Did you just saw that? Did you saw what I did? I went over the sausage and nothing really strange happened. So the car just absorbed the whole sausage over there. Obviously, you cannot be crazy, but... Ah, how is that? And we still have cold tires. So obviously, if you hit the sausage with the whole under tray or the splitter, the car will jump right because it's you know completely stiff uh, uh, body panel against the ground you cannot expect something different but if you do it as the professional do and I advise you to check uh, a couple of live uh, vi videos on YouTube from rear races you can see how the real driver managed to hit those high curbs with just the 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 wheel just the tire so they go over with the tire and they climb over there with the tire and eventually the whole car is on top of the high curb uh, but the the cars do not jump this is something that it was very hard to do or almost impossible to do with uh, the old uh, version now it's much much possible you see that over the curb a little bit of bounce, not big deal of a jump, but completely under control with the car handling. Look at this. Ah, uh, how was that? That was pretty good, right? Do you remember the dreadful Curb of death of Lesmo 2. Yeah, no big deal, right? I know the feeling. Now, again, that doesn't mean that, oh, yeah, it's silly, easy, no problems, all the car can do it, you know. But it is definitely doable, it needs technique, it needs precision. But you can do it now without losing time actually the opposite you could even gain some time if you do it properly again the tires are a bit hotter now so let's try it aha look at this control over here with the traction roll greatly limiting the exit okay let's try it again one more time You see? This is the aggressive setup. You see now, if you if you cut the curb with the under tray, obviously the, the whole car jumped. But even in that uh, worst case scenario, you saw that after the jump, the car just landed and stopped bouncing. Perfect. Really, you know, it, it starts to feel like a race car. Stable, uh, you know, stiff but planted. It's really good. By no means easier because you can easily do an error and uh, spin it and over the, do it. But really feels well and you can see that you can do things that you can also uh, do... Uh, in uh, uh, from from the real drivers in the real series. Let's see this now from the replay. Let's go over here. Look at how it goes up, goes down, no big deal. Let's go also in uh, variante two. Look at variante two again. Up the curb, boom! Very nice absorption. And again, 
Let's go from the other side. Oops, sorry. And let's see how it absorbs. No problems at all. You can see that the car stays a little bit on the two wheels and then instantly landed, absorbed the heat, and there you go. Look at this. Look at how nicely it absorbs the whole. And let's go one more time over here. From this side. And up goes. Oops, I've missed it here, possibly. Yeah, look, look at that. Completely took the whole curb and look how the tires are flexing. Boom! Boom! Look at the big flex of the tire when it, it landed. But the rest of the suspension absorbed the heat for, for us. Let's go also into Variante 2. I think we took it from the other side. Again, let's have a look. Yeah, look at this. Boom! Fantastic. This is really, really cool. And it also looks very nicely from, from the outside, so... Oops. Look at this. Look how smooth it looks. Boom! And natural. You can feel the car. And now one of the great things is that it doesn't only bounce up and down, but you can also see the car flexing also left and right. It's really, really cool.